Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode on understanding the great I am on my channel the indescribable God. Today I'm going to be talking about the characteristic of God where God is our defender, our protector. And uh, my focus today is Exodus, you know, the deliverance of Israel from the country of Egypt from the Egyptians. There are some beautiful things that have were, are written in uh, the book of Exodus, some things that really caught my attention. And one of the things that caught my attention was, I'll explain some of the verses that caught my attention that showed me that God is a deliverer. This is what the Lord said to Moses, okay, this is when Moses was on the burning bush and he told Moses to go and talk to his people. And this is what the Lord said. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac and of Jacob appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. Now, isn't that amazing? I mean, God visited them. He didn't sit in heaven and look at them being tortured. He visited them. He personally went to Egypt. But because God is spirit, we don't see it. They didn't see it. They didn't even realize that God visited them. And many a times when we are going through difficulties, we don't realize that God is with us. He visits us. He comes to our aid in that time of difficulty. When you cry in the privacy of a room, you know, all by yourself, you cry and you, you talk to God. God visits you at that time. He doesn't sit in heaven and listen to you from heaven, which is what we think because we can't see him. But he visits us. He is there at that moment with you right there. And this is what it said about the Israelites in chapter 4 verse 31. So the people believed and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked on their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. So many times when we go through a difficulty, we find it so difficult to even turn to the Lord. And to say anything to the Lord but when we realize that God has heard us in that moment when we cried out to him and he answers us and we come to know about it that's the time when our spirits get lifted up and then we are able to look to the Lord and say Lord I thank you I love you I adore you I worship you you are a God who answers and that is exactly what happened to the Israelites now here is the beautiful thing about what happens you know when Moses came back okay the Lord had told him to tell Pharaoh to let them go into the desert and worship for three days so the initial deal okay when this whole exodus uh, started began was that the people of Israel would go in the desert in the wilderness for three days to worship the Lord that's it so they had not asked for their freedom but Pharaoh was stubborn and wouldn't let them go. And then, here is the beauty that I wanted to speak about. The Israelites never did anything to the Egyptians. Not a single thing. They didn't lift a finger against the Egyptians. Because they were a defenseless people. They didn't know how to fight. They didn't know how to defend themselves. And that is why, because they called on God, he came to their defense and he fought that back because they dared to raise their hand on God's chosen children, on his people. Now, if you look at each of the plagues, if you put yourself in that situation, you'll see how difficult it was for them to uh, go through that. But the beautiful thing is that Israel didn't do anything. And furthermore, Israel did not go through half those plagues that the Egyptians went through. And God specified and told Pharaoh that to show that there is a difference in my people and your people, whatever plague comes against the Egyptians will not come against the Israelites. And there was a very clear distinction. And there were, when, when, when the Lord declared that and said it to Pharaoh, that's the time when Pharaoh sent out his men to find out did the Israelites also get affected by it or not? And everything, by the time the Israelites left Egypt, 
everything that Egypt was blessed with because of the Israelites living in that land and God's anointing and blessing being upon them which spread to everyone else okay everything was taken away by the time Egypt, uh, Israel left Egypt was one of the poorest nations in the world why because at that time a wealthy nation was one that could sustain itself and the sustenance came from grains and it came from cattle and by the time the Israelites left the grains were destroyed the fields were ruined and the cattle was dead so because of that they were very poor and still when the Israelites left, they asked, the Lord told them, ask for gold, ask for silver, ask for whatever you want. Ask from your neighbor. And the neighbors were so broken at that time because they had lost their firstborn children that they just gave them and said, just take what you want and just go away. Just leave us alone. Because they were so tortured by all the things that happened to them. Now, when if you're an if you're on the side of the Egyptian, you'll feel like, oh my gosh, this God is terrible. But if you're on the side of the Israelites, you'll feel, my God is awesome. God gives every one of us the opportunity to be on the side where the Israelites were. Or you can be on the side where the Egyptians were. But we all have the choice. And how do we choose is when we choose to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and accept Him and believe in Him and declare Him as our Lord and Savior and follow Him and what He has taught us. When we do that, you are clearly choosing Jesus. You are clearly choosing the Son of God. Why Jesus? Why not God the Father directly? Because Jesus is the sacrifice that was given for our sin. He is the one who has ransomed us. And because He has taken our place and died on the cross in place of us, we have taken His place. Jesus has given us that opportunity to take his place and what is his place? His place is the Son of God. Not accused but the Son of God. Not the guilty but the Son of God. So when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, whatever you are guilty of, Jesus has taken that of yours and he has given you what is his. So automatically you'll interchange places. So Jesus goes in your place and you go in Jesus' place and you become the child of God and Jesus has taken your place as the sinner. And wherever there is sin, there is death. And so Jesus paid for that with his life. He died and paid for it. God the Father is still our defender even today. He is our protector and our provider. And in any situation you call to him, he will answer you. When I say God is our defender, I don't only mean that He comes to defend us when we are in a battle or we need to fight. You know, our battles today are not wars. They are not fought with swords and guns and all of that. Some people do have it, but everybody on a daily basis don't fight with guns and swords. Not anymore. But we have a battle that is going on every day. You get it? Our battle is always in our mind. Our battle is always against the devil. Our enemy is the devil. And whenever we cry out to God, God comes to our rescue. How does the devil attack us in terms of, you know, um, in the battle in our minds? For example, if you are a person who's struggling financially, okay, the devil will always attack your mind with thoughts of what are you going to do to pay that bill that's coming up oh your children's education is there how are you going to pay for it but he will never talk to you in second person he will always talk to you in first person so you'll have thoughts like i got this bill and i don't know how to pay it i don't know from where am i going to get the money maybe i should sell something maybe i should do something maybe i should work over time maybe i should you know see what is there in which account of mine and pull it out from there and then we try to find a solution because we are worried about how are we going to pay, make that payment. That is a battle. But even in that, God comes to your rescue. And here I can testify about the Lord because this happened with me. I was working at that time and I had a policy which I had to pay. An insurance, life insurance policy of my husband which I had to pay. And the amount I had to pay was 30,000. It was an annual uh, payment that had to be made. 
and I had 15,000 only and I was running short of 15,000 and I checked in every possible account. I could not, you know, uh, roll the money in such a way that I could squinge and squonge and, you know, collect 15,000. I just didn't have the money. And so finally, you know, most of us do this instead of first turning to the Lord and asking the Lord for help. We try all our methods and when everything fails, then we go to the Lord and say, Lord, I need your help. So like a stupid fool that I was at that time, I did just that. I went last minute to the Lord and I said, Lord, I need 15,000 rupees to make this payment. I have got exactly 10 days to make it and I do not know how am I going to get it. I said, but I'm asking you and I'm trusting you. And I left it there. I was still worried, okay, I've got to be very honest, I was still worried and concerned because I did not know how this money is going to come, where this money is going to come from. I was just so confused and tensed about it. But I went about my days as usual, okay, with the worry and tension and every time I would get worried, I would say, Lord, I thank you, I trust you. I don't know how you're going to make it happen, but I'm trusting you. That year, everybody got a bonus. It's called a Diwali bonus in India. So for Diwali, we all got a bonus and I received 18,000 rupees as my bonus. And I was so happy and overjoyed. And I was like, Lord, I needed only 15, but you gave me 18. Thank you so much that my policy will get paid. And it came exactly about three days before the policy was due. And God was so good and gracious. He gave me 3,000 rupees extra, which I could have used during that Diwali vacation because there are a lot of things that expenses that come up but that is not all not only did he provide for me you see when you give your life to the lord and when you surrender your life to the lord and when you tell the lord to be the lord of your life okay and he becomes your savior he becomes your defender he becomes your protector he becomes your provider wherever you go all right just like joseph joseph he was in potiphar's house potiphar was blessed he was in pharaoh's kingdom and whole of egypt was blessed in the same way when you give your life to the lord and wherever you go god walks with you everyone around you is blessed and this is the second part of this testimony which is the greater part of the testimony i used to sit and there was a glass partition between me and a guy from the accounts department and that guy said Ari, what has happened to our boss? Wonder what made him decide to give us a bonus. So I was a little confused. So I went to him and I told him, I said, why are you confused about a bonus? I said, isn't it normal? I said, every year for Diwali, you get a bonus, right? So what's the big deal? And then this guy tells me, he said, no, we don't get Diwali bonuses. He said, we've not got a Diwali bonus in four years. This never happens. Our boss doesn't give us a bonus at all. This is the first time in after four years that he has given us a bonus. And I was like, what? You all don't get it every year? And he was like, no. And then I was so confused. And I was like, okay. And then I came back to my desk and I sat down. And I just thought about it. Here was one person. Just because I am the child of God. Okay, I had a need and I told the Lord, Lord, please help me provide. God didn't just stop at me but he gave the blessing to the whole company and every person got a bonus that is our god the god of abundance the god of overflow the god who who you know gives you over and above anything you can ask or imagine truly he will do it that way for you and he will defend you he will defend you no matter what he is amazing. I would like to, I mean, I, when I started this, I wanted to talk only about God, our defender, our protector, our, 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 you know, deliverer. But he is so multifaceted that you, you cannot talk about only one quality of his, one characteristic of his and not hit on another at the same time. You know, I hope you have gained uh, an insight about God, the father. God the Father is amazing and you should get to know him. The God of the Old Testament is Jesus himself, but a whole different personality. They are so different and yet so similar. They are mind-blowing and mind-boggling. They are amazing. But get to know the Father because he loves you and he longs to reveal who he is and what he is like to each one of us. If you've enjoyed the sharing, uh, do let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you have any questions, any queries, anything that 
you feel you need more clarity on my uh, email id is in the link below so you can definitely write me and i can definitely revert to you i pray that you have enjoyed this and i pray that um, you will be blessed by it and uh, do share it with someone else whoever you feel uh, needs to hear about this for today that's all i will say god bless you and have a wonderful day